We are live, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world. Welcome to the show. This is the weekly beer and video review show with me, Danny Soleil, aka Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan, aka Movie Man Dan. And it is good to see you. We are early in the morning here in Los Angeles, California, and I got such a fun show. Who do we got in the room already? We got a few people in here. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you stopping by. I know we're a little bit earlier than regularly scheduled time, but from time to time, the Bills game dictates when the show is going to happen. Because it's on a Sunday and the Bills play later today against Arizona, we decided to push the show and have it a little bit. Yes, Jens. Hello, Welch and the Masses. I'll be in the comments tomorrow. Yes, great, Jens. We'll enjoy. I heard the leader's up by 16, so enjoy that. Uh, you know, I always appreciate you stopping by when you can, so thank you so much. we got a great show. Guys, if you're new to the show and if you've never been here, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. We go ahead and we review beers. i got two delicious tasting beers coming up on the show. Well, two beers. Hey, Uncle John. <laughs> yes. What's up, Uncle John is back. Welcome. Welcome. Two beers we're going to try out today. Two fun holiday beers, and uh, they are from one of my favorite breweries in the United States. So I'm looking forward to that. All while going ahead and reviewing these beers, we have, well, segments where we talk about the videos that are coming out next week and the videos that came out last week on my channel. Then we have a bunch of different segments like, what would you rather, this day in history, what are you reading, what are you watching, and then I wrap it up with a quote. All while having just a good old time, having fun, just taking it easy and enjoying ourselves. So if you're here for the first time or if you're a regular and you show up, I want to say thanks a lot for being here. Looking forward to having you here. And well, without further ado, let's get started with the show. Now today's beer, I said, was from one of my favorite breweries in the United States. And it really has just such a profound taste to it. It's different than any other beer um, that I've tried. The lager itself is much different. I want to say, hey, hey, Greg, you made it from Poland. Safe travels, Greg. Thank you for hopping on all the way from Warsaw, Poland. That is awesome. Greg was traveling. Uh, I was wondering if you're going to be on the show, but thanks a lot. We're talking about the new beer that we're going to try today, and that is from the Samuel Adams brewery okay but this is they every year they put out a holiday edition a 12 pack of six different holiday beers uh excluding the pumpkin beer that comes out around november um i believe the cherry wheat i, I forget what it is but uh anyway today's beer is from the samuel adams brewery and we're going to be trying out the dark and robust holiday porter look at that I just bought the 12 pack last week. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, this beer is going to be fun. I've never tried this one. Um, it is, let's see what the alcohol percentage is. It's probably pretty good. I don't know if it's going to touch into the, it's 5.8%. So just under 6%, which we consider a strong beer here on the show. But Samuel Adams always puts out a dynamite beer. The regular Boston Lager, phenomenal. I think we reviewed it maybe last year sometime. Uh, the cherry wheat is delicious. Uh, the holiday, this is the holiday porter, but there's another holiday beer that I always drink at my Uncle John's house when I go for Christmas. I'm not sure that it was the holiday porter. Uh, Uncle John, if you can kind of chime in which which is the holiday beer that you always put out there i think it's the winter ale that possibly could be really good beer phenomenal taste and hopefully that this one falls right in line with all the delicious beers that samuel adams produces and i've really taken a shine a liking a thirst for samuel adams and honey or the porters so without further ado we got the the bottle opener and we're going to go ahead and crack this sucker up and give it a whiff, the initial whiff, to see what it smells like. Oh, yeah, that's a good sweet taste right there. All right, I can smell it. It's strong. It's got, um, well, that distinct porter taste, smell to it. And we're going to go ahead and pour this sucker in. We're not going ahead and doing a shotgun today. White Christmas. Ah, okay. I think, we're been, I think we have that one. 
Um, we're not going to go ahead and chug a beer because the Bills haven't played today. So if they, uh, if they go ahead and they win today, I'll somehow make it up to you. But here we go. We're going to go ahead and try out this Samuel Adams Holiday Porter. You know, sticking to what a porter looks like. Almost a, like a, a pop of Coca-Cola or a coffee cup. It is strong. You can see how dark this is. You're not playing. <laughs> Uncle John. Well, don't worry. Uh, I'll make it up to you guys. But, hey, take a look. Right away, I see that the porter's got a dark color to it. It's got a good-sized head. Lots of carbonation going on, if you can see in the light here. It's not as dark as it appears, though, as it hits glimpses of light from my staging light up there you can kind of see where you can see through it just a little bit some of these porters are like well it's like black paper if you will but well let's go ahead and the best thing I like to do is take a sip and start analyzing it here we go ah oh man that's smooth that is really smooth all right well it's smooth it's clean. It's definitely got some other complex flavors in there. Some type of fruit or something. I want to say maybe a berry. Maybe a little bit of a cherry flavor in it. Something else is going on inside this holiday porter. And it is really good. It, 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 it gives you kind of that porter taste. But not that real pungent porter taste like a Guinness would. But it's got... um. It's got a sweetness to it that I really enjoy. And the first sip is not bad. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a fun beer to review. Guys, if you're just hopping on, I know it's a little bit earlier. That's okay. We're drinking the Sam Adams Holiday Porter. It's 10 a.m. That really felt good because, well, right before the show, I was a little bit hungry. And I do a fast every day. I don't eat until 10 o'clock every day. So my intermittent fasting time is between 10 and 6 is when I go ahead and eat. But um, I was so hungry and I didn't want to drink on an empty stomach. So I ate half a bag of these chips. I don't know if you guys have seen these. Uh, Pacquio. And these are ghost pepper like Doritos. And I'm not a guy who really likes hot food, right? I, especially this shit is like scorching my mouth still. And I wanted to try it out because... Next week, or two weeks from now, I'm going to be in Las Vegas with my friend Nate, and we're going to be doing the live weekly show, um, and we're going to go ahead and try the hottest chip in the world, which is this company. It's one chip, and it is supposed to be just absolutely insane. Hot, hot crap for this guy. You eat that when you're hungry? Yes. Isaiah, what's up? Yeah, I know. It, it, it's really crazy, man. I didn't realize how hot these things were. I ate it about 10 minutes before the show. My mouth is still on fire. But, um, so the beer really tastes good. But stay tuned for that because in two weeks, we're going to have a delicious Pachi, Pachia One Chip Challenge live here on the beer show. Nate will be joining us. He'll be on the show. We'll be shooting from his house in Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's going to be fun because... Man, if you don't know, ch just check out One Chip Challenge and, and you'll see people. I don't, I'm, I'm a little scared, to be honest with you. I think the chip itself is like $14, but I want to go ahead and review it. I want to see what it's like, so I'm going to be doing it live in two weeks. We're drinking this beer, the Holiday Porter from Samuel Adams. Now, let me go ahead and start the show when we talk about the videos. Guys, I don't know if you checked out last week's video. A lot of fun for me. A lot of fun... Um, just getting into character, dressed up as kind of like a forest ranger, a guy in the woods, and um, an environmentalist, if you will. And I read another classic Dr. Seuss book called The Lorix. All right, one of my favorite books. It's been made into a cartoon. And to a hey, 16... Yes, yes, Martin, that's, that's what I do. Absolutely. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you just grub down all this fast food and all this crazy foods and stuff like that? It's because I only eat eight hours a day. Um, now, things change around the holidays, I will say that. But but for the most part, I eat on the 8 to 16, basically meaning I only eat for eight hours that window from 10 to 6. Yeah, so 
that's how I eat. But hey, we're talking about videos. Check this book out if you haven't seen it. It is great. It is a fun read story that I brought to the kids and the people of the world that want to check out the Lorix. I dressed up as like a park ranger. It was a lot of fun. I had the mustache at the time. I had the crazy outfit going. Hey, Pops is here. Welcome, Dad. All right. Yeah, really good stuff. If you haven't seen it, I tried to grow the mustache uh, so I could look more like the Lorix and bring a lot of fun to the video. And as I continue going forward with the Reading Man Dan next year, I'm going to be going ahead and getting into more and more costumes when I'm filming it. So I've definitely taken an evolution step in my videos. And now I want to try to up it and get better and better, better each time. And when you're reading cool stories like Dr. Seuss, it's always fun for kids to go ahead and dress up. And it's also fun for me. Like, I don't do this stuff... Um, because I, yeah, I have to. I do it because I absolutely love it. I love to entertain. And thank you so much for joining me. But if you haven't checked out this last week's Reading Man Dan, this is what I did. The Lorix. It was great. It was good stuff. Um, literally, we have three people in the room. And thank you so much. I think we have my dad, Uncle John, and, and somebody else. <laughs> Maybe Greg C. So uh, I knew the time change would flip around everybody. But that doesn't matter. We're still going to go on. Guys, I now want to hop into the segment that we've been doing each and every week for the last few months, and that's the COVID segment. I hope that you guys are all doing okay, staying safe. I know here in the United States, they are pumping up um, all over the media that the cases are rising, so please be careful. I don't know who's saying what is correct, but I'm definitely going to err on the side of caution because if they are correct and, and cases are rising, I want to go ahead and do whatever I can do. And... Um, you know, protect myself and protect those that are around me. So, please, be safe. Uh, I'm hearing that Europe is locking down parts of their place, uh, countries and stuff. I'm not sure what California is going to do. We're kind of on the fence. I'm probably assuming sometime after Thanksgiving they're going to have more of a harder lockdown. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope that you guys stay safe. Uh, be diligent out there. And that's all I really want to talk about with that. Um, now, the next thing I want to get into is basically, I don't know if you guys remember last week when I was talking about our quarterback, Josh Allen, and how he destroyed the Seattle Seahawks. So, if you know anything about Buffalo, we haven't had a good, good, good quarterback since the 1990s, the early 90s, Jim Kelly. I mean, we had some good years with Flutie, and Drew Bledsoe did pretty well, but, but nothing like where you knew you were going to go out and your quarterback was going to you know give you a better chance to win. Uh, but I think we have one now. Josh Allen is his name, and we're doing really good with him. We're 7-2. and two. He's lighting up the field. He's got another 400-yard uh, passing uh, game behind him. But we played a really tough game last week against Seattle, and nobody knew this in the media. <laughs> Jim Kelly, yeah, Jim Kelly was the man, dude. Jim Kelly was the man. Um, that was our last good quarterback, and he stopped playing, I guess, I think it was I want to say 96, 97, somewhere around there. But his really good years were 90, 91, 92, 93 when we went to the Super Bowl. Unstoppable. But, hey, um, so I'm talking about Josh Allen right now. And so what happened with Josh is he came out and he destroyed the Seattle Seahawks, which, you know, fair play to the Seahawks. They don't have the best secondary out there. So he lit them up. He did his job. But unbeknownst, known to anybody, was uh, the fact that Josh's grandmother had passed away the night before the game. So the coach, Sean McDermott, had told Josh, listen, if you don't feel like playing, I completely understand. And Josh said, no, I got to play. You know, the, the, the people need me. Uh, my team needs me. All this, you know, you, you can imagine what he said. You know, just an overall good dude. So he came out, rocked 400 yards. Well, when the city of Buffalo found this out, they had so much empathy and care for their quarterback that he was able to put his team first for the for the joy of our city and to play the way he did. They went ahead and they started a found his his foundation is for Oshai's Children Hospital in Buffalo. Well, they started donating in increments of seventeen dollars right after the game when they found this out. And as of now, less than a week, six days. They have donated over $500,000 to his foundation. 
I mean, what an amazing community, Buffalo. I know me personally, I definitely donated. I ponied up, gave 17 bucks, because you don't know where that money's going to go. People, children, children need that. Um, and so $500,000 was really just a salute to the people of Buffalo. And I'm sure people outside of Buffalo also donated because of the story. Um, I saw a great cornerback from the Kansas City Chiefs, Tyron Matthew, the honey badger. He came out and said, you know, that's what that's what it's all about. That's that's a diehard community. And we're so proud of our football team and our hockey team, even when they lose. But, you know, on on the field, of course, it's great. It's awesome. I lived through those 90s bills. It was amazing. The Sabres, the one they were doing good. But um, having uh, a community that backs its players off the field for more important issues, such as Children's Hospital, man, I got to say, I salute each and every one of you. If you guys donated, that's awesome. If you haven't, I'll go ahead and put the link down below if you want to. It's 17 bucks. You know, that's like... Uh, the price of a meat mountain <laughs> at Arby's or whatever, but just um, it's going to a better cause. I've definitely called a bunch of hospitals here in the Los Angeles area. I'm trying to do my part and in getting into the children's hospitals where I can go ahead and do Reading Man Dan live. So hopefully that will definitely go through. But I just want to say that if you can do something small, if you can't, that's okay too. Maybe you can do it later when you have the extra flow. But if you can, go ahead, check out Josh Allen's, uh, you know, foundation that he's donating, and, and and donate $17. We'd really appreciate it, and I'm sure the children around the world, or the children that are going to benefit this, will absolutely, um, you know, be thankful for your money. All right, here we go. So cheers to the people of Buffalo. Yeah, you know. Cheers, Martin. Martin. Martin, I got you, buddy. Uh, dude, Martin has got... Martin is a very special show for you, my friend, because we're going to be doing an unboxing of a present that you had sent me. Uh, last week, I, I received it on Monday, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and open it live on the show. Uh, so stay tuned. Martin had sent me a present um, it's right down there. That's what we're going to unbox for the show and tell segment today. But this beer, one thing I like about Sam Adams is, well, it's kind of weird because it's got a really good flavor to it where it's got some sweetness. I don't know if it's the malt going on in there, but I taste more of a fruity sweetness. But it's also got that really clean, crisp, almost like a watery taste to it. And I know that sounds weird and unusual because nobody likes watery beer, but the mixture of those two combining together really make this holiday porter a delicious sip. You know, they, you know, I feel like sometimes you want, good morning, handsome. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Roxanne. Good morning to you. It's not too many people call me handsome, but thank you so much for hopping on. This is what we're drinking, is the Samuel Adams Holiday Porter Beer. It's delicious. And what I was going to say is, you know, when I'm at home uh, in Buffalo and my father, you know, all the restaurants I, I go to in the world, I, I don't care where I go. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if it's in Spain. I don't care if it's uh, South Africa, Asia, some great places here in the United States. My favorite restaurant in the world is my father's kitchen. That's it, period. That is my favorite place. I love the way my father cooks. Um, he, he's just awesome. So, so Dad, I love you for that. Uh, thank you for always chefing it up. And, and being around your family and stuff like that, or, or, or Christmas dinner, or Thanksgiving and stuff, or any holiday, you want to drink a little beer because I don't drink wine, right? So you're eating all this heavy kind of food. You're eating uh, pigs in the blanket. You got hams. You got all kinds of roast beefs and shells and all kinds of delicious tasting food. So you want a nice beer to par with that. Some sweetness and porters can sometimes be a little bit too heavy. Like after the first two sips, you're more full from the beer. And already this Sam Adams, I can taste how delicious it would pair with any meal, any holiday meal. Um, so Definitely looking forward to trying that. It is a dark and robust beer, but I can taste more of a sweet and clean, crisp beer. Really enjoying that one. All right, so here we are. Looking forward to the game. My wife loves the sweat jacket. She used to. Oh, dude, that is awesome. Greg Z is 
money, dude. So Greg Z uh, had purchased some of my hoodies on my merchandise. The link is down in the description uh, of any one of my videos. And he gave it to his wife in Poland. And uh, he, he sent me a picture today of him and his wife, or his wife, and, and she was wearing the Travel Man Dan sweater in Poland, out in the field. Thank you so much, Greg. That is awesome. I'm glad your wife... Uh, enjoys it. I have some merch like I said before with some patches. I'm getting things developed here So if you are part of the O25 that means the original 25 people the people that have helped grow my channel grow my uh, Live show going and help me out each and every day uh, With my channel whether it's a comment whether it's a like whether you're hopping on each week I, I got something for you guys and I'm not gonna charge you I'm gonna send it to you so I do appreciate you guys going ahead and purchasing that uh, hoodie Greg I'm glad your wife enjoyed it uh, we're coming very close very close guys I just looked at my analytics of about hundred and fifty subscribers from 5,000 which for me that's a huge deal because last year I had 2,000 the year before that I had like 500 so incrementally each year I'm growing and growing and growing and if you know anything about this YouTube is the hardest one to grow because well they don't allow for bots and, and buys and things like that you have to grow the channel organically and the only way to do that is to consistently show up and do content and thanks a lot for you guys for showing up and enjoying it and Greg really I'm glad your wife liked it but Excited about the Bills game, guys. I don't know. I'm going to give my solid prediction right now. Uncle John, what do you think? Dad, what do you think? I'm going with Bills 31, Arizona 27. I think it's going to be a shootout early. I think there's going to be a lot of points put up in the first half. But then I think the Bills are going to have a traditionally terrible third quarter like they always do. And then the fourth quarter, they're going to get a little scared by Kyler Murray's running. And then eventually they're going to make a big play somewhere in the last eight minutes, which will flip the game in the Bills' favor, and we're going to hold on to the lead. That's just my prediction. I'm putting it out there. It would be awesome if the Bills were 8-2 and two going into the bye. Hey, how about it now? All right, guys, if you're here and you're hopped on, thanks so much. We're drinking this Samuel Adams Holiday Porter, delicious beer. And um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Kyler is going to be hard to stop. Yeah, I know. He's got a lot of weapons. Hey, guys, Roxanne was just hopping on here. I'm not sure if she's stu still here, but Roxanne's daughter was the inspiration for the Lorix. She had hit me up and recommended it. Ariana, so shouts out to you. I really appreciate it. People are enjoying this. And the good thing about it is, well, once the video is made, it may only have like 40, 50 views. That's not why I do this because it's forever and it allows me to create and you never know what's going to happen. You're always one video away. So thank you again, Ariana. The Lorax was so much fun to film, to create, and I hope that you guys get the chance to check it out. All right, now, one other thing I like to talk about staying with football. How about them Irish, all right? I know you see the Italian Stallion shirt, okay, from Rocky Three, right? But how about those Irish? You know, they're now undefeated. They're the number two ranked college football team. And uh, they got a squad, man. They got a squad. And Brian Kelly, if he doesn't land a head coach job soon, within the next two years, I mean, I, I don't know what his ceiling is. I think he probably tries to win the college national championship with Notre Dame. He already beat the Beast. Hey, Sophia, my favorite beer in Milwaukee. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. You like this beer, Sophia. Calvin, hello from Blustery, Minnesota. Can't linger on. We'll catch you. Ah, uh, dude, thank you, Calvin. I appreciate you just come by saying hello. Um, this is what we're drinking. If you get a chance, Samuel Adams, I think, started it maybe two weeks ago. Uh, right after the Halloween holiday, they put out a 12-pack of uh, holiday beers. And we're going to be reviewing those throughout this next couple of weeks until I get to Buffalo and then we're all going all Western New York. We might even do a beer review every day. But if you get a chance, check this one out. It's delicious. It's a nice easy porter. I definitely if you if you never had porter, this is a good one to start. Um all right. Now Sophia thanks for joining us from Mexico City. Calvin thank you for joining us from Minnesota. Now I want to talk about something that happened in the news 
and that is great famous women. All right, woo hoo hoo! We talked last week about uh, the woman that walked off of the Tonight Show as the lead writer because she just felt like, you know what, I'm tired of writing Trump jokes. So we saluted her. Now we're going to salute another woman. And this woman, oh man, this woman is so huge. And she has created a monumental shift in what is going on in sports. And I want to tell you guys, congratulations, Kim N., who is now going to be the GM of the Florida Marlins. That is freaking awesome. An Asian-American woman who is now going to be a GM of a Major League Baseball team. And I really like this story. I think it's really great because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't one of those things where baseball or sports felt like they needed to push somebody because of the pressure. I feel like sometimes in... Now I see Green Bay vs. Jack, go Packers, huh? Yeah. Now I see sometimes, awesome. Now I see sometimes that Hollywood kind of, um, kind of placates that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know where, but when you see it, you know it, right? But this wasn't that. This woman, Kim Ang, she worked her ass off in baseball for 20-some years, and she worked her way up. They gave the best person for the job the job if, if you will so congratulations i hope she does great and i hope she opens up the door for more ladies to go into higher offices in all professional sports and hopefully we'll probably see some coaches remember we are waiting in mexico city i'm wait. i can't wait to come to mexico city sophia i cannot wait i i just i was just looking at uh, uh videos of mexico city so congratulations kim i hope you have a great great first year i hope you have an amazing career and you've opened the door for young ladies all over the world to aspire to be a head of a sports team uh management um and to go as high as you go you you are uh man it's just really you know i'm impressed so i'm looking forward to see what you can do congratulations all right the next thing i want to talk about is do, 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 do. um well i'm going to talk about uh the theme song for Travel Man Dan is, uh, well, no, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to talk about the schedule for the Travel Man Dan. It's going to get a little shaky over between now and Christmas because I'm doing some crazy stuff, man. So come December, I wanted to enter what's called Vlogmas. Okay, it's like YouTubers that put out a video every single day all the way up until Christmas. So 25 videos. Now, whether you go live or whether you film it and edit it, it doesn't matter. You're just putting out content each and every day. So, in order to do that, I didn't want to just go live. I'm, I'm putting out content each and every day that I'm filming and I'm editing. So, I needed to start preparing for it. I shot eight episodes yesterday, and I'm going to shoot eight next week and eight the following week. And then I'm going to have them all edited, where they come out each and every day throughout the month of December. And what am I doing? I'm doing Reading Man Dan Christmas episodes. <laughs> so it's really, um, it's been really fun for me. It's something I started since the pandemic kicked off and I wanted to go ahead and really just kind of dive in and see what the hell would happen. And because I'm able to control it here in the studio, I'm able to set it up, go ahead, get all the books. I mean, I'll give you a little sneak preview. This is already what we read, The Littlest Reindeer, we did The Grinch. We did, oh, look at this one. Stay tuned for this one. You guys are going to like this one. A Coronavirus Christmas. Okay. We did a couple of classics like Jingle Bells and Rudolph and lots more to come. But since this is taking all my time, it's definitely going to be worthwhile because each and every Christmas, I'm going to have 25 videos of me reading Christmas stories. I am not able to go ahead and produce like I used to as far as like travel or even food because I'm just so dived in and focused, laser focused on creating this particular month of content. So next week we will be going dark. You will not see um, a Travel Man Dan video that comes out in the midweek. Now you will see the Micro Monday episode, which comes out tomorrow, which is another fun continuation of my adventures in Shanghai. Now, if you've been following all my adventures in Shanghai, I've been predominantly on the side, which is called Pushi. It's like, um, well, it's a sub part of the city, and what the uh, what, there's a big river that goes through Shanghai, and then on the other side is Pudong. 
Now, Puxi is like the older section, the old China, the old Shanghai. Then that giant river, and you can see me in the Bund. I, I go to the Bund. You take a ferry across. You can take the subway, too, underneath um, this little tunnel. But I take the ferry across, and I go to Puxi. It's a really fun, neat, quick little episode. It's a micro. Ni hao. Wo hen hao. Ni hao. Ni na. Um, so yeah, it's it's fun if you if you haven't checked out Shanghai and you want to learn more about it. I take the ferry across, and what's what's really cool about this video is as we were filming it, there was some other pretty big Chinese vloggers on that ferry at the exact moment, and they hit me up and they were all excited and they were really like, oh yeah, you know, you know, and then they asked what I'm doing and we're talking. A lot of times, wo xi lao nice, nice, wo zhong guo ming da xing xing, and. Uh, one of the cool things about it was, you know, they ask, it's, it's typical, hey, you know, you're a foreigner in their country, and they ask, what do you do here? And when I told them I was an actor and I was over there acting in a television show, they were so excited. They asked me what movies or television shows I was in. I showed them a couple pictures on my phone, and, and they loved it. And we're on this, like, boat, and you can see how excited they are. I ended up on their show just organically and live. It was really good fun. I cross over into Pudong and then I'm going to show you not the inside because they wouldn't allow me in, but just the outside. Bills versus Cardinals. Yes, Sophia. Yes. Very good, Sophia. Sophia, prayers to your family, okay? I know your brother was sick. I hope he's doing better. But um, I also want to show you what the most expensive apartment building in all of China looks like. Uh, I can't go into it, like I said, but I'm, I'm standing out in front of it and it's pretty interesting. It's really cool if you get a chance to see it. So check on that video, that comes out tomorrow. <clears throat> then the schedule will be like this. Then the following week, I'm gonna be doing the Travel Man Dan theme song, where I went into a studio with my uh, friend Colton, who is a musician. And we went ahead and we made the Travel Man Dan bumper theme songs like travel around the world with Travel Man Dan. Do, do, do. You know, he put a little jingle on it, did some singing. It sounds really cool. You'll be seeing all that coming up in the 2021 videos. We also did the Food Friday, Food Friday, Food Friday, Food Friday, Food. You know, that we did that video. So, but you're going to see me inside the studio working with him. He's going to show you what it's like to go ahead and produce a song or you know he does all this weird stuff on the wheelie things on the um, boards and stuff but it was fun for me to go ahead and get on the microphone and, and create this intro myself so that comes out the following week and after that it's only going to be reading man dan throughout the month of december and the weekly beer and video review show so i hope you guys can hang after that we got some compilations and 2021 is going to be awesome we're going to be out there traveling again we're going to be out there seeing stuff really looking forward to it and can't wait to show you guys all the good stuff coming up so without further blabbing along this is what we're drinking if you're just happen on. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. We are drinking the Samuel Adams Holiday Porter. It's a delicious beer and I'm really enjoying it. And uh, wow. That is nice, okay. Now, that weird berry flavor that, um, that I'm tasting, that's more of a chocolatey flavor actually. And I really like it. It's um. It's a smooth porter. It's nothing too heavy. It doesn't leave that weird taste to your mouth that some porters do. And Sam Adams is just a great brewery, and they've created another great product. All right, now is one of my favorite times. This is the show and tell. And holy shit, do I got something to show you guys. Now, I kind of know what's in this box because I got a picture of it before it was sent to me. And um, that's okay. Because I was just as excited, and when I received it, I'm going to be even more excited. I'm so pumped up to see this. I'm so pumped up to hold it. I'm just ecstatic that it happened. I cannot believe it. Today's show and tell was a package sent to me from Martin. Martin, are you still there? Where are you? Say hi, Martin. Martin Morganson. I don't know if you guys remember about three weeks ago when we were talking it was a packed room. It was just boom, boom, you know, just popping up with comments. There he is, Martin. It's your hour, buddy. Here it comes. And uh, Martin told me that he was a sports memorabilia collector. 
and that's pretty cool. You know, he's um, he collects a bunch of jerseys and hats and autograph signings from all the different people. Trader Joe's has a Samuel Adams. Oh, oh, I'll look for that. Thanks, Bert. But this right here, this right here was what Martin sent me in this box. Okay, received this box earlier this week. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you what Martin had sent me. Because he had alluded to the fact that he was a sports memorabilia collector and that I was a huge Bills fan. And he said something about our famous quarterback, well, that Greg already mentioned earlier. Hey, Carlos, what's up? All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and open this up. And this is a special gift from Martin. So thank you so much, Martin. We're going to go ahead and saw that sucker up. Cut the tape right here. And I'm going to show you what is in this box that Martin sent me all the way. I believe Martin is also Danish, but he sent this from somewhere in Florida. So that is pretty cool. And here we go, guys. Let's open this guy up. We're opening it up. All right. Okay, we, can you guys see okay? You got these big old pants. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin, are you effing kidding me? Holy cow. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. You don't even know what this is right now, but I am going to show it. Oh, my gosh, I saw that. Look at this. Oh, my gosh, Martin. Martin, are you kidding me? Look at this. Oh, look at this gorgeous Jim Kelly jersey from 1990. There it is. Oh my gosh, it's got the Cigna. Look at this beautiful thing. And then here, he wasn't bullshitting. Guys, look at that. That is an autographed Jim Kelly. I don't friggin' believe it. Oh my gosh, Martin, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is amazing. Oh, I totally want to wear it. But with the, the, the insignia here, Jim Kelly's autograph, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want it to come off. I have a Thurman Thomas one. Now I have Jim Kelly one. And oh my gosh, my dream is to go back to Buffalo in about five years and go ahead and build the baddest, the bitchinest Bill's Cave ever. And this will forever be there. Martin, I really, really can't say thank you enough. I absolutely love it. It is awesome. Oh, man. It is just amazing. Don't love the small... Don't lose the small coal car. It should be in it. Yes. Uh, small coal car. Was that this, Martin? Ah, the coal car. Look at that, guys. Certificate of Authenticity. The coal card. I will not lose this, I'll be honest with you, I will not lose it, but um, I will never ever sell this jersey. This will never be up for sale, so I'll never need this. Um, I guess I can put it in the frame, I eventually want to frame it, but the fact that you went ahead and sent this to me out of your kindness and your heart, and um, I never met Martin before, we're not friends, he started hopping on the show, he definitely supported me. Um, and wow, did you come through or what? Are you kidding me? Dad, do you see this? Uncle John, do you guys fucking see this? Are you serious, man? I, I just want to try it out one time and then I'll take it off. I, I, just, I just want to see what it feels like or what I look like in this awesome Bills jersey, dude. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Dad, this thing is awesome. Look at this. Hey, <laughs> yes. Martin, look at this. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, the love and support that I get from the Danish people is unbelievable. Between Tenacious Freak and Aquanuts and their giant mugs and, uh, wow, this one. You know what? I am going to go ahead and I'm going to hang it in the bar because this needs to be seen throughout the whole show. And this is just an epic jersey. I think I would look better on me. <laughs> no way, Dad. I'm sorry. I love you, Pop. But this right here is all mine. Look at that. Doesn't that look good up there? All right. Dude, I like this. 
This is starting to shape up like a Bill's bar. Hold on, let me adjust this a little bit so you really can see. Oh, this is beautiful. Are you freaking kidding me? Martin, Martin, I'm like so high right now. <sighs> wow. Man, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, well, we're going to try to finish this show. I lose the, the lose to frame out mine, but that's what you need. Yeah, definitely. Greg Z, that's what I'm definitely going to do. Um, it, it, I'm going to frame up a bunch of bills. You know, I eventually want to move back to my hometown and have like a bills man cave. <laughs> so uh, I just got to find a woman who likes the cold. You know, but uh, look at this beautiful thing hanging in here. And uh, Martin, cheers, man. Throw it up there, guys. What an amazing person. What an amazing gift. I really can't say thank you enough. Really made my, my week. I mean, the rest of my year is like, dude, I can't believe you sent me a Jim Kelly autographed jersey. And uh, it's the real deal, too. It's a Mitchell Ness. It's real deal. But, uh, wow. Mind blown. Mind blown. I cannot wait to tell all the Bills Club today what I got. And one of the guys that we do the Bills Club with, he wears a Jim Kelly jersey that his dad gave him. So that would be pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to wear it because I love it. I love that it's uh, signed. And I see it. Uncle John, yes. Um, I love that uh, it's signed. I'm going to put it up. I have the white Thurman Thomas one. I would definitely, I'm going to try to get myself an Andre Reed one. And... I really like uh, James Lofton. I mean, there's uh, the whole Bills team, you know. But anyway, moving right along. Now it's time for one of our favorite episodes. And uh, Barrow, are you here? I don't, I, I don't think Barrow knows about the show being on earlier. Um, but uh, now it's time for one of our favorite shows. And that is, What Would You Rather? <laughs> yeah, What Would You Rather? What Would You Rather is pretty fun. Bruce Smith would be a good one. Ah, that's the one for my dad. He would look good in a Bruce Smith jersey. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. So what would you rather? Guys, I, there's a lot. There's not too many people here today. I understand the time change. We're going to eventually move it to this time. I think it works better for the European people. But, uh, you know, people maybe are expecting it to be on at 3. Whatever. We're here now. This is what would you rather. If you want to go ahead and throw up your answers, that's cool. There's not a lot of people in there. But here it is, guys. What would you rather? Where would you rather go, right? Okay, and this place looks awesome. Would you rather go to Greenland? Look at that. Okay, look at that little village in Greenland. Nice and snowy, colorful houses. You got a giant glacier iceberg in the background. I mean, how crazy does that look? Um, that's where they, you know, probably eat whale blubber and, and ride on the huskies and all kinds of cool winter stuff. And, you know, it's just, um, and if you don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody from Greenland. I just, you know, I, I, I was just talking shit. So it just looks like a beautiful place. Um, got the water right there. Or would you rather go to Tahiti? Check out the difference, right? So... We have kind of like an iceberg, except for it's a little volcano. And then look at those little grass huts that are elevated on that blue crystal clear water. Man, that would be awesome. You got the little bridge to walk out there. And, um, geez, just what an epic kind of setting that would be. I mean, you have to be careful of any waves or anything. But I think they built them there because it's probably pretty calm. So, very different in uh, contrast of where are you going, little grass hurts. So where, where where are you going, guys? Are you going to Greenland or are you going to Tahiti? It's up to you. But for me, I absolutely love both and I hope to do both of these places. I know, see, Martin's like, it's a hard choice because I love the cold. Both, Dad. <laughs> Dad, you know, I'm always looking for a cameraman. So, um... I definitely would love to go to this because of the quaintness and just 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 looks cool and you know nobody goes to Greenland and visits and stuff so I don't even know what there is to do there but I think just going to Greenland hanging out for a week walking around getting sloppy drunk maybe going sledding that's okay just being there for me I think this 
is just such a cool and exotic thing to do. I think it's probably so romantic. You're probably eating a bunch of fish, probably just relaxing, getting suntan, uh, not a care in the world. It's a tough choice. I got to be honest with you. But if I could only choose one, if it's going to be one, I'm definitely a snowman. I'm going with Greenland, okay? I know I live in warm weather. And I absolutely love the beach, and I love all the fun stuff that goes with it. But for me, this is it, man. I love this style. I love this, um, all the colorful houses. I love the snow. I think it's just a unique place to visit, and not too many people know about it. Same thing with Tahiti, but I think it would just be an interesting place. I hope to go ahead and do both of them. And then another goal of mine is to do a weekly live beer show from one of those huts. How awesome would that be? All right, here comes number two. What would you rather? Would you rather smell, okay, not eat, smell only. Would you rather smell freshly baked cookies? <sighs> Picture it, man. I don't care which ones they are. Oatmeal raisin, chocolate chip, some kind of fancy one that you guys do on the holidays. Or would you rather smell grilled steak? I mean, just the whole tomahawk going down that thing, you know, and that 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 wafting just crosses you. Like, oh man, you you could have literally just already eaten, but if you smell grilled steak, you're ready to eat again. So, what would you rather? Would you rather smell fresh cookies or grilled steak? For me, I absolutely love grilled steak. I love grilled meat. I love being on the grill, but nothing beats more than a sweet tooth steak for martin nice i definitely am a cookie eater i love cookies i'm so looking forward to getting home at christmas dad i want to see you in that kitchen busting your ass making them cookies now a little thing that i like to do steak with the butter on it nice craig i love um my dad for years makes these like uh they're like hershey kisses they're like a I don't know, just a sugar cookie with a Hershey Kiss dropped in the middle. And they're good, okay? They're really good. You got a mix of a sugar cookie with a chocolate. But a few years ago, I made a suggestion that you should put the, the mini Reese's cup in there. That's it, man. That's the one for me. You take those, uh, those sugar cookies and you drop a Reese's cup in the middle. Hands down, absolutely love it. Best smelling cookie. Love to eat it. And um, for me, it's cookie. All right, number three, what would you rather, right? All right, would you rather peanut butter cookie? Yes. All right, Dad, Dad knows what's up. What would you rather? A beautiful wood log house, okay? And in the back of that wood house, like Lincoln Log, whatever, just picture Amish cabin, in the back of that is a pond, right? And and a forest, and you got endless forest that you don't know, maybe take trails with your dog, and just like total serene. For those of you that live in Buffalo, I'm talking about the southern tier, like down in Franklinville and whatnot. But um, would you rather live in that style, or would you rather live in some great brick house with ivy stretching along the side of the wall, and then in the backyard, although you have neighbors and stuff like that, Along the, uh, in the backyard, you have this immaculate garden, flowers, vegetables, all kinds of plants, but you're more in a suburban setting rather than a country setting. Which would you rather? That's a tough call because I definitely like the city. I love the city, actually. And I like the suburbs because they're close to the city. And I don't never lived in the country, but every time I go to the country, I love it. So... My also, my favorite house is going to be, I want to buy an old barn, like a barn and convert it into the top level where you make it one giant floor room that you live in. And on the bottom, I, uh, I have like all my stuff that I exercise in and just maybe like a studio where I can film and stuff like that. So that's pretty important to me. I don't know about being out in the boondocks if that's as much important to me because I've never lived there. So I definitely like the attraction of both. But if I was to choose one, I would probably choose the barn house with the pond and the forest off the beaten track a little bit. Sounds awesome, right? That's for me. I really want to see, well, if I can find something that's not too far from the city or from the suburbs, but also gives it that country feel. And I know a great place for that. 
My Orlando house is two miles from the city. Center of my house is in Poland. It is the forest. The best. Yes, that is. That's great. Yeah, the forest is something. There's something enchanting, romantic, relaxing. But like sometimes when you're like way out in the forest, it's a little too much, right? Um, so something in between. And a good place for that. And I know I keep bringing it up a lot, and there's a lot of talk. Is Buffalo, New York? Because once you leave, like. The ring of like North Buffalo and, and, and Kenmore, Tonawanda, North Tonawanda, all those uh, cities, and I guess South Buffalo and West Seneca and stuff. The next ring of that isn't that far from the city, but it also gives you that very country appeal where you can have a big plot of land. Shit, there's this place called Grand Island in Buffalo that is really perfect for that stuff. Anyway, what would you rather let me know now? Let me know after the show. Number four. Okay, number four is a movie choice. Who do you prefer, prefer as an actor? Which brother do you like better? Sam Jackson, Samuel Jackson, or Idris Elba? I don't know if you know him. If you saw him, you exactly know who he is. He was in The Office. He's, um, he was the, 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 the manager that Michael had a fight with. He's been in a ton of movies. Uh, he's a, a phenomenal actor, great person. Uh, really good good guy and um, of course you all know Samuel Jackson for me personally I like them both I love their work I think they're outstanding um, you know Idris has got a lot of other things outside of acting that I think is really intriguing um, he definitely pushes himself and I think that's what makes him a better actor even you know he's 50 some years old but his body of work is incredible Samuel Jackson to me is a huge inspiration because he was a kind of guy like same thing like me where he was on the fringe of making you know getting in breaking in if you will and uh, he was on that fringe for a long time and he continued to work and he continued to pursue his craft of acting and uh, he did a movie um i think it was love jones or one of the spike lee joints i guess i have to go with the only one i know sam jackson oh you know idris he yeah you know who he is um you, you just maybe not recognize the name he's a british actor once you see him i think he was on the wire um but anyway, so Samuel Jackson was continuing to put out good work and, and things that people never heard of. He did one movie, he thought he was going to make it. He was in Coming to America where he played the guy that tries to rob McDowell's in Arsenio Hall, flips him over with the broomstick, and that was Sam Jackson. He didn't actually really break in until his first full feature movie, which was Pulp Fiction at the age of 46. So... You know, I got a few years younger than him, so, I, you know, I, I kind of marry that guy and uh, look at his career and say, you know what, if he can do it, why can't I? So continue to pursue it. But he also, I enjoy his work on the X-Men and so many other movies. So for me, I would rather watch Samuel Jackson movies. All right, now here comes number five. Number five. It's not disgusting, okay? It's more on the bravery. It's more on the craziness, right? So what would you rather? Now... We're going to go ahead and say, just for the purpose of not being morbid and that, you know, others have been affected by this, so we really certainly don't want to offend anybody like that, but you're going to not die, okay? <laughs> but these two items that you could choose from are definitely going to be um, strong and they could kill you. And for this purpose, we're going to say you're going to get banged up. It's going to hurt like a son of a bitch. But you're not going to die, okay? So, what would you rather do? Would you rather get into a barrel you can construct, okay? However you want to engineer it, I don't care. You can do it however you want. And go over Niagara Falls, the Horseshoe Falls. Just boom, boom, you know, you go over. And uh, many have tried. Many have succeeded, I think. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the actual numbers, but a lot have actually uh, passed away. So... Would you rather go over Niagara Falls in a barrel or you go out onto a golf course in Florida during a lightning storm and you hold a golf club straight up in the air and you wait? Because I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Florida lightning, but that shit just touches down right to the ground. It's crazy. Uh, uh, there ain't nothing like a Florida storm. You can literally, not only are you in it and you see it, um, you just feel it. It's crazy when the lightning comes. You have a good chance of getting that rod connected to your arms and your body as being a conductor and just 
<laughs> so what would you rather <clears throat> for me I don't like being electrocuted uh, I don't think it feels good I don't like it just a little bit even when I put in the wrong battery or whatnot or you know just you know, go into the wrong voltage of a, a wall socket so I definitely gonna pass on the lightning and I kind of caught also in there. I can't even shake down the stone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, Craig. I definitely would try to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wondered can I do it? How would you do it? What would be the strategy? So, for me personally, that would be my what would you rather. I hope that you enjoyed this segment of what would you rather. We had some fun stuff. We didn't get too crazy about boogers, blood. Uh, semen crazy stuff but we just kept it really quick easy and i hope to hear from you after this video is over please drop it down in the comments below if you're just hopping on with me now we got uh, how many people we got six people in the room so not a packed room probably a time change it doesn't matter we're still rolling on we're doing the sam adams holiday porter and it is pretty dang special i'm gonna go ahead and swig it down give it a score and we're gonna roll on to the next beer really good i gotta say it's got that it's got a lot of complex flavors when i what i was saying earlier it's got now of a bit of a chocolatey malty taste where when i first started drinking it it was more of a sweet and berry taste when it comes to porters some of these things can be filling we both need to keep it clean there's a lady sitting <laughs> okay yes greg okay i'm glad i'm glad that i i so that's it greg we just have your lady, your wife next to you, and that's how you uh, keep it clean. <laughs> that's awesome. But um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this beer. Sam Adams is puts out great work, you know. Their beers are awesome. I definitely encourage you to check out your local grocery store for the Sam Adams Holiday Pack. It comes with six different beers. It comes with, like, the regular Boston, the 76. I don't know if the cherry wheat's in there. i got to take a better look. But this is the one that we're reviewing. I really enjoyed it. Would I drink it again? Hell yeah. So, Dad, if you get a chance to check this out, go over to Consumers and pick one up. The 12-pack. Holiday Porter is dark, robust, but it's smooth. The first couple of sips were really creamy. It's got a sweetness to it that you're going to like. I definitely tasted a bit of roasted malt in it. I also tasted a little bit of sweetness, almost a cherry or whether like pure chocolatey flavor. Awesome beer, definitely suggest it. That's why I'm going to give it a good score of an 8. That's right, I'm giving the Samuel Adams Holiday Porter a score of an 8. So I'm looking forward to trying that one again. There's a few more inside the box, and I'm excited to try them out. Love Sam Adams. But now, let's go ahead and bring up the second beer of today's show. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. I really appreciate it. This is Die Hard right here. This one is going to be fun because this one is also from the Holiday Pack with Sam Adams. And this one I've never tried before. Um, it looks interesting. It is, um, well, it is the Sam Adams Holiday White Owl. Ba -ba Whoa. All right, so we had the Porter, which was dark. Now we have the White Owl. It is 5.8% alcohol as well, so just as strong. Um, should be a good flavor. This is more, I think, on a, it's like a crossbreed between um, a whole garden or like a Belgium white and an actual uh, L. So let's go ahead. We'll crack this sucker open. Get it a big whiff. Ah, um, really kind of no smell to it. I'm not really smelling anything. But let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm predicting that it's quite cloudy. It's not super dark. And well, here's the best way to do it is to pour in there. And right away, we can see that is actually quite light looking. It's got a bit of a maize color. It is not too dark, not cloudy like I thought it would be. I don't know, maybe the holiday white owl threw me off a little bit, but nevertheless, not a bad looking beer, right? Definitely doesn't have as much carbonation as most beers it's got that weird lingering black cloud that i always talk about underneath it very very little head to this guy but i can still see that the carbonation is going from the bottom up to the top and uh well 
kind of smells a little bit unusual. Uh, let's go ahead and take a first sip. Uncle John will know. He's tried them all. And yes, Uncle John, you like the Sam Adams, huh? All right, well, this one's for Uncle John. First sip. I don't know, man. That is a weird flavor. That's a really weird taste. Unusual. And I'll give you that. It's. Uh, I don't. I can't pinpoint it. It doesn't taste like. It doesn't taste like beer. To be honest with you, for me, it tastes some weird kind of flavored juice drink. It almost tastes like a like a flat drink. Okay, you never drink like a pop or a juice that's real flat. It. it it's got a little carbonation to it. It kind of tastes like, uh, I don't know if you guys are into those like hip new drinks called kombucha. Uh, it kind of tastes a little bit like that. It doesn't have an overall significant flavor that I can distinctively taste. It's just kind of just a flat overall ride kind of through the sip. And well, that was just the first sip, but we'll go ahead and continue drinking it. And uh, if you're just hopping on, this is the second beer, the Sam Adams Citrusy. Nah, not really, Greg. Not too citrusy. This is the Holiday White Owl, okay, from the Sam Adams Holiday 12 Pack. All right, we got through the first half of the show. We are rocking and rolling, and we are one hour closer to the Bills game. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Jim. All right, <clears throat> now, here's what we're going to do now. Is It's time to roll into this day in history. This day in history is going to be fun. I know, Barrow, this is your favorite segment. I wish you were here, but you probably are out celebrating Diwali. So, to all my people and all my friends in India, I want to say happy Diwali. I hope you're having a good time. I hope the festival is vibrant. I hope that you're enjoying yourselves. And all around the world, if you can't stay um, and get together like the holidays that we're approaching, Make sure that you're staying safe and you're enjoying the people that love you and that you're having fun within your family. So to Indians, happy Diwali. All right, here we go. Borrow this one is for you. This day in history on November 15th, 1777, the Articles of Confederation, the first constitution of the United States, is approved by the Continental Congress. So the Articles of Confederation... Boy, I need Cousin Brian more than ever. It's basically the, the start of the Constitution. I don't want to get into it because I'll probably say something that isn't true. But if you want to check it out, this is what happened on this day. 1777, the Articles of Confederation were approved by the Continental Congress. All right, on this day in history, on November 15th, 1837, Isaac Pittman, introduces this is bizarre introduces his shorthand system of writing okay and if you are having trouble with this so am i because when i went ahead and researched shorthand writing i was just baffled by it because we had our english uh, written language and here's this guy in 1837 isaac pittman who introduces this other form of writing called shorthand. And it's basically like relearning the alphabet. And I'm telling you guys, Google this, check this shit out, watch a video. It looks like you're writing friggin' Chinese. Like it's just like slashes and whips and like just weird things. And like, why don't you just fill out the A or do the B like you're supposed to? You know, he had to make it shorthand. Kind of like new math that's been going on the last couple years with kids. But man, I'm telling you, so puzzled, so wacky, very interesting. Not sure what that's all about, but on this day in history, that's what happened. On this day in history, November 15th, 1904, King C. Gillette patents the Gillette razor. All right, so that's right. King C. Gillette, on this day in 1904, he patented the Gillette razor. Not actually this razor, probably the razor inside. And came the handle and everything. But this is a Gillette. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this all over the world. This is a very popular company here in the United States. Gillette, the best a man can get. It's a pretty good shaver. This one's kind of like, eh. I just keep it in there to do a little touch-up every once in a while after I'm done shaving. But 
On this day in history, King C. Gillette patents it in 1904. On this day in history, November 15th, 1969, Wendy's Hamburgers, American fast food restaurant, my favorite, which was founded by Dave Thomas, opens his very first restaurant in Columbus, Ohio. <sighs> yes, I really, they would do the shorthand in the courts and all the time. Yes, okay, so it's kind of like stenographing, right? So thank you, Greg, I appreciate that. But yeah, on this day in history, in 1969, Dave Thomas opened up his very first Wendy's hamburger in Columbus, Ohio. And, uh, you know, I've been clamoring at the chance to get back to the United States. I mean, get back to Buffalo, New York. Sometime when I get back there, I would say within the next two or three years. I know it seems like a far way out, but I got a big docket going on. I'm going to definitely go to that original Wendy's because Wendy's, in my opinion, is the best of the fast food burger places with like, um, we're talking like Checkers, McDonald's, Burger King, you know, five guys definitely in, in Smash Burger, they're in a league of their own. Um, but when you're talking like simple fast food, Wendy's is the best to me. And on 1969, it opened up its first restaurant in Columbus, Ohio. On this day in history, November 15th, 1986, the Beastie Boys released their debut album, License to Ill, the first number one rap album in all the Billboard charts. So, yes, Greg Z's on board. Yes, Greg. And so, yeah, that's pretty dope. They, they had songs like uh, No Sleep to Brooklyn, We Gonna Fight the Right to Party, Brass Monkey. If you've never listened to that album, you got to check it out. It's an amazing album. And like I said, on this day in history, in 1986, it became the first to rank number one rap album on the Billboard Top 100. So that's pretty cool, the Beastie Boys. I don't think they're still making this stuff. They did a really cool thing. And if you ever, if you ever get a chance and you ever want to go into search stuff... The Beastie Boys did one of the coolest concerts. It was a concert called I Shot That. And what they did is they took 20 people at their concert. This was years ago, maybe like 10 years ago. And they gave them cameras. And they were sitting in all different parts of the arena. And they gave them the cameras and they said, all right, film the shit out of this concert throughout the whole night and then return the footage at the end. And so they returned it and then they edited it, Brass Monkey, that funky monkey. All right, so... I think we only have Greg Z, my dad, and Uncle John. Whoever's in the room, give me a hello. Guys, who's in the room? But yeah, um, yeah, check that out. It's called I Shot That. It's really interesting. And then they edited a full featured movie of that concert experience. All right, well, this is what we're going to go back to. We're drinking the Sam Adams Holiday White Al right before I tell you the last of this day in history. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. It's now I now I know what it is. There's some type of cinnamon or some type of nutmeg going on in there. Maybe a little little pinch of nutmeg. There's something going in there that is deflating the yeast flavor from beer. That nice beer taste that we all love. Um, I could par would pair with food. Maybe maybe a couple of cheese and crackers. I don't know. Uh, still getting into it. I'll let you know as I finish it. On this day in history in 2015, we might have seen the greatest upset ever in UFC history. In Australia, Holly Holm defeats Ronda Rousey with a head kick from hell. Holy shit. I'll never forget that. <clears throat> Ronda Rousey was on a tear. She was arm barring every woman that stepped into the cage with her. She had like eight submissions right in a row, and they were all like arm bar. It was like you knew what she was going to do. And she would just judo chop and judo flip you, and then she would put you in arm bar, and it was lights out. But Holly Holm was a boxer from New Mexico that came in and just pieced her up a little bit. It was jabs, and she had a dominant kick. Kicked her in the head, knocked her out cold. <clears throat> and, you know, Ronda was great. She was one of my favorite fighters. But let's be honest, Holly Holm knocked her out of 
retirement, and knocked her into retirement. She tried to come back. I think she ended up losing again to Holly Holm, fought one more time against Amanda Nunes, and, uh, and that was it. And, you know, then she went to the WWE. She's had a huge, successful career. Um, I follow her a lot. She's got a cool little farm out in Hawaii, I believe, with her husband, Travis Brown, who's also a heavyweight. But on this day in history, in 2015, Holly Holm shocked the world by beating Ronda Rousey. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this segment of This Day in History. Uh, we are drinking Sam Adams Holiday White Hell. It's pretty good. I mean, I don't love it. It's okay. I, I take back the pretty good. It's okay. I'll, I'll give you that. It's just got a weird, unusual taste to it. I, I don't know what it is. The more I drink it, the more I don't like it, to be honest with you. Um... It's, maybe it's one of those beers that you got to drink like when you first are, are going to start drinking and you just drink it and you get through it and it's okay. It's got some flavor to it, but now let's get to some beer because it doesn't taste like beer. It tastes weird. It tastes like, um, well, like a holiday white owl would taste. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the hell that means, but I definitely taste a little nutmeg. It's definitely really conked out that whole flavor of beer that I really enjoy, especially like an IPA. It doesn't have any of that. But hey, maybe you might enjoy it. So, different opinion. Now, I want to bring in the segment, what are you reading? What are you watching? Now, I'm doing obviously a lot of Christmas reading. So, I haven't had a chance to go ahead and really dive back into my scripts or dive into the stuff that I'm reading. So, I, read, I picked up an old book of my teacher, my Kung Fu master, my Shifu, and this is Lo Gar Kien. Okay, and this is a really old school book from the 70s, and it basically takes you step by step how to do the forms that we learned back in class. A couple of the stances, check it out. This is the cat stance right here. This is the side cat stance, the front. This is the opening hello. Okay, and it just kind of takes you through each little movement. So. Right, as you are putting together your form and all the moves that you do, you can kind of follow through with this book. I've been reading up on it. I've been practicing a little bit in here in the studio, a little bit in the yard, and just really kind of getting familiar with this form again because I haven't done it in a long time. But my Shifu, Buck Sam Kong, was a master. He's in the Kung Fu Hall of Fame. And I love just reading up some of the old literature that he put up back in the 70s when he came back from the war. And, uh, you know, it's just really kind of cool to kind of re read this again, especially after the years of evolution of being a martial artist, to go back to the original source of when I first started learning in one of his books. Let me know down in the comments below what you're reading. I'd love to hear from it. What am I watching? <laughs> this one's funny. I found myself a uh, scroll thick uh, group of characters, and the show I'm talking about is called Workaholics. I, but um, complete slackers at work. Like, is it? All right, we're back, guys. I don't know what happened there. A little reconnection problem, but hey. Check those out. If you ever seen Workaholics, start at season one. It's up to eight seasons. That's what I'm watching. It's absolutely SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob SquarePants. I think it's a great show. I think it's a great cartoon. So that's what I'm watching. Let me know down in the comments what you're watching, what you're reading. This is what we're drinking. We're drinking the Sam Adams Holiday White Ale. We're going to go ahead and swig this down. I'm going to give it a score. I'm going to rip off the quote of the week. And then I'm going to say goodbye and get ready for the Bills game. Here we go. I don't know, man. Just don't love it. It's got this weird aftertaste. Like, it's not cinnamon. Maybe it's nutmeg. But I almost, I almost taste like a, like a weird bo taste. Watching Pinky Blinders, nice. I, I, I it's, a, it's just like harsh bit, bitterness that comes through. And I don't know if it's a, the staleness coming from the bottle. I don't know if it's something inside the yeast where it was overcooked i don't know too much about the brewing but i definitely taste it i'd love to know what it is because i taste it predominantly in this white ale not a great beer i enjoyed the beginning of it the middle of it was in eh, and the last bit nah, i'm definitely not gonna probably look forward to drinking it maybe stomach 
Meaning, try it like the first beer that you have because it does put a weird taste in your mouth. As I continue to drink it, I can, I mean, as I continue to talk, I can still taste that weird little rankness. Uh, not one of my favorite beers of the Sam Adams, the Holiday White Ale. And then again, I'm not a big fan of the Hefenweissens, which are also White Ale. So maybe that has something to do with it. Overall, I'm going to give this a 5.5. That's right, a 5.5. Wasn't the greatest beer. Um, got a few more holiday pack. I'll try it again. We'll see if it kind of twists my fancy. But at this point, I'm not really interested in it. But this one, the Holiday Porter, absolutely, definitely. I gave it an Asia to probably drink. The other good ones first didn't leave the last. Yeah, but I, the problem is I don't know, Greg. I don't know which one is good. I've never really tried these ones. But this one is an 8. I definitely suggest you try this one. And this one, I gave it a 5.5. Now, that could be completely wrong. And as we continue to develop the scoring system here, here on the weekly beer video review show with Danny Soleil, I'm going to go ahead and have like a taste, price, label. We're going to have a, a point score that all totals up and gives you a better review of what the beer is to the table. So, this one, eh, 5.5. This one, yeah, an 8. Delicious beers. Definitely looking forward to trying some more. If you can't, Drink them right now. I suggest you get on over to the supermarket. They probably have the Sam Adams Holiday Pack. And you're probably going to like at least two or three of them. The 76 I hear is pretty good. But now I want to go ahead and leave you with the quote of the week. And the quote of the week is from none other than Samuel Adams. And Samuel Adams said this. He said, let no man thirst for a good beer. <laughs> there it is okay so this dude right here let's take a look at him that was his quote he said let no good man thirst for a beer and I feel that same way like if you're a good guy and uh, you're out there working hard you're supporting your family you're doing right by society and you just you just want a good beer you just want to you, you're thirsty. You come home, you hang your hat after a day's work, you just want to crack open a beer and drink it. And Sam Adams' quote is such iconic to not only me, but to all you guys out there that love drinking beer. It means so much to us. Um, we always look forward to having a good beer, much like a lot of people do with wine or with other drinks. A beer is really just un un unexplainably exceptional. And when you thirst for it, and if you're a good person, it's very well said right there by the man, Samuel Adams. I'm glad you guys liked hearing that quote. I hope that you guys get a chance to try out the holiday pack. This one, definitely really good. The porter. Once again, this sucker right here, we're going to take it down. This one is from Martin. Are you freaking kidding me, Martin? Wow. Just love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely, really, really am so happy that uh, that you guys, well, you go ahead and support me. Allow me to entertain and create this show. And uh, this is just the icing on the cake. I, I can't thank you enough. So, next week, the show will be back to its regular time. That'll be 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Those of you on the East Coast, that's 6 o'clock. It'll be the regularly scheduled time. I'm not sure where you are in Europe, but if you can join us, and I'll continue to let you know each and every week what time the show will be on next week. Because around the holidays, it kind of it, it fluctuates due to the bill season and due to traveling. So thank you so much. We didn't have a jam-packed bar. We didn't have a jam-packed crew, but we had quality, right? We had good people. We had Uncle John. We had my dad. We had Mark. We had Greg Z from Poland who just came off of the airplane. Greg Z, that is champion. Dude, midnight here. So, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, the dedication, all right? I'm looking for millions of people. I'm looking for good people. And you guys are it. So thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's beer. Dad, I'll see you soon. Uncle John, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to come home. The days are coming closer. We are uh, up next week at the regular scheduled time. And hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks again for watching. I'm Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Reading Man Dan, a.k.a. Movie Man Dan. 
And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see everybody. And thanks, Dad. Bye, guys. See you, Greg.